You guys hear me? Somebody type something in the chat if you can hear me. All right, I'm such a goofus. I can't. I'm. I'm. I've been working with this thing for two months now, and I still can't seem to uh, feel like I've got it right. Anyway, hi, it's Daryl. Welcome back. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing really well. Uh, I'm kind of low energy today, but I'm going to try to get through here. And, and uh, today's not a very difficult uh, lecture. Um, there's not a whole lot to say. You guys already know what the battle plan is. Um, everybody got in their plans, and I powered through it today and got the plans back to most of you, um, practically all of you, and I'm very happy with them. I think that you guys are right on track. Uh, I was extremely pleased with the emotional discussion boards, so you guys are really, really good. I, I think that we're going to have some really terrific um, presentations this month. So I'm excited to see what you guys do. So uh, this is the week. This is the week where we turn you loose with a blank canvas and, and you start creating. And uh, that's really all we have going this week. So uh, there's not a whole lot for me to deal with in lecture. I'm gonna be here all week for support. Uh, there is a little bit of reading. So I wanna talk about the reading to some extent. Uh, but uh, the reading is in line with what's dealing with production. This week's Discussion board is not a graded activity and is not going to take any of your time up. It's basically just an open board for uh, uh, getting feedback from each other and for passing tips along. And I've already planted some inf interesting information in there. I'll uh, I'll go through that, but there's no there's no need to post in this week's discussion board. We wanted to clear the slates, and the only thing you have to get done is the is the presentation. But that's not a little thing, that's a big thing. So you're going to create a three to four minute presentation. You're going to have voiceover audio. I want you to create the voiceover audio first and then attach the slides to that. That's the order that Nancy uh, Duarte wants us to work on presentations. And I want you to turn in a completed presentation at the end of the week. You know, we're saying first draft, but it is a complete presentation. I don't want holes in it. I don't want you know placeholders to say I'm gonna I'm gonna do this later. I want you to have everything in place. So uh, and and the most important thing to have in place is the voiceover audio. I don't want anybody to have any illusions that you're not going to, to speak. You are going to speak, and that will be the basis of your presentation. And you're not speaking to me. You're not speaking to your classmates. You're speaking to your target audience. You're talking to that company, the folks at that company that are going to hire you. That, that's the conversation that I want you to create and I want you to hear. And I want you to be very focused and positive on that conversation. And don't think that you have to drag the real world into it. You know, uh, one, one of the things that really uh, drags down a lot of presentations for students is that they think they have to do the part of the, of the other side and ask negative questions like, why should I hire you? Or why are you better than anybody else? Don't even introduce those questions into the monologue. This is, a, this is your chance to talk about you and your skills and nothing else exists. This is all your time and you get to own all of it. So don't bring negative thoughts in. Don't work against yourself. Just talk positively about what you can do directly to the company in this rare three, four minute interview that you've magically been granted. That's what the presentation is. Um, we're gonna give you a wide variety of uh, presentation tools to work with, your choice. So part of what I wanna do today is to give you uh, a notion of, of, of what's available. Some of you may have worked with uh, Adobe Spark last week. Uh, some of you have already been working with PowerPoint and, and other things. Some of you seem to have some video chops, so you wanna work in video, that, that's fine. You can create these presentations in video. But what I want is a voiceover and slides. So even if you liked being on camera last week and you talking directly into the camera, you can do that. You can do a talking head, speaking directly uh, as your, as your uh, instead of audio, you can have a web video of you talking. But if you do that, you still have a responsibility to create slides that overlay on top of you 
for some portion of the program. You're not allowed to just do a web video and not do slides. You have to actually create slides. That's part of the brief for this assignment. So uh, in the reading, um, basically this week's reading is talking about how to, how to put things together, how to create that story, how to make content that has an impact. And, you know, uh, doubling back on some of the things that we've talked about, your whole thing is focusing on the audience. If you know who you're talking to, if you know who that employer is, then you want to do everything you can to connect with that employer. Talk about their products. Don't tell them who they are. They know who they are. But let them know that you know their business, that you are familiar with the company brand, with the company style, with the company vision, that you fit in, that you have ideas for them. So this is your chance to talk to these people and impress them and make a connection. And that's your, uh, your main point in doing this talk, is letting them have a vision of who you are so that you become someone real that they want to hire in their, their minds. Uh, and we're going to do that by telling stories. We're going to say who we are. We're going to talk about uh, how you got started in your you know, chosen field, how you got your skills, some of your life experiences, some of the things you did in your life maybe have nothing to do with what you're studying, but they be, have everything to do with making you who you are. So the part of your life that matters in this conversation is what you want to bring in. A lot of people have a lot of baggage in their life and a lot of negative stuff, and they feel like they have to unleash all of that. Again, that's not true. Your, your point here is to tell the story that the audience needs to hear. And uh, they need to get a sense of who you are and why you're valuable. And you don't need to drag in things that don't matter. So if there's part of your life history that you want to omit for now, you can do that. If you want to own it and talk about how it, it made you better and you persevered, then that becomes part of the story. But you're telling the story of who you are, how you got to that moment two, three, four, five years from now when you're talking to that dream audience. This is, again, an event in the future, so you're imagining it. Uh, we're doing that by telling stories. And with these stories, we want to visualize them. So as you have created your voiceover, that's the very first part of this week that you should work on. You should work on the script, uh, take, your, take your plan notes, the beginning, middle, and end elements, turn them into a script, rehearse that script, speak that script out loud several times, and then start to record it. Get a good recording. And once you have your voiceover, then you wanna illustrate that with images that help tell that story. We wanna show what you're saying so that people can understand it. And uh, in that regards, there's an awful lot of things that you're gonna say that are kind of abstract. You know, if you think about talking about yourself, you're gonna talk about qualities that you have. You wanna tell people that you're honest. Well, you can say that you're honest, but then how do you visualize that? That's an interesting problem. And I actually wanna work on that right now. I have an exercise for us all to participate in. And uh, those of you that are watching the video, this exercise is linked into the discussion board. So you can play along too. Now, this is not a, uh, this is not a graded activity. This is just something that you guys can work on if you like. So uh, what I want is I have created a shared Google Doc. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take the URL for that and drop it in the chat box. And uh, if you click on that link, then you will be connected to this Google page that I've created uh, by the browser of your choice. And a Google Doc, a shared Google Doc means that everyone who's connected, and we already have four or five people connected right now, everyone has full editing capabilities. So this is a slightly dangerous thing. Any one of you could select all and delete the entire page at any moment. So we have to work collaboratively so we're not messing up what each other did. Each of you have an associated color and your cursor is a different color. So you can find your own cursor wherever it's landing. And the way we wanna work here is the first thing, uh, I, have, I've, I have five words here that 
describe um, abstract ideas. And I want you to find the best image for you that illustrates that idea. So we're gonna post that image in the big box. And before we post the image in the big box, we're gonna claim the box so people do, don't paste over each other. So the first thing you wanna do is to, is, to, is to grab a box, put your name on it. Now I've done one here already. Uh, you know, I have a, a picture for adventurous. I'm gonna do team player right now so you can see what I'm talking about. So I, I put my name under it. And once I put my name under and claim a box, I'm gonna put my cursor in the box. You can see that my cursor, my cursor's black, is in this box right now. So that means that when I choose an image, it's gonna paste into this box. So now I wanna come up to insert, you see in the top menu up here, insert, insert image, search the web. Remember, this is a Google Doc. So Google has built Google search into this page. And when I do that, uh, I then have a Google search. So you can now search, do a word search on anything and you'll, you're, you're actually attached to Google images. Um, so you can put in you know, the word itself. Uh, now be the, don't be the guy that grabs the first image, always. You're wanting to choose an image that speaks to your audience, that speaks to who you are, that shows the sort of visual sophistication of your ideas. You are showing who you are by making these choices. So we can go through here. We see, I see a whole lot of soccer movement here and whatnot, but uh, I actually know what sort of image I wanna put in here. So I'm not actually gonna do a search on team player because I know exactly what I want. I'm gonna put in sky dive team. And then I have images of people forming uh, together out uh, in, in, in uh, skydive jumps. In. Here's one that I like. I selected it. Now it's got a blue check mark on it, and down at the bottom it says selected. And once I've selected it, I can click on this button that says selected. Sorry, I have to move some things around. I can click on the word insert, and now that image is going to insert into the box. So that's all I'm asking you guys to do. I want you to do word search. You don't have to do all five. You, you can do all five if you like. I have plenty of boxes here. So there's no reason, you know, you don't have to be in the first row, but basically this first row here is for adventurous. The second row is for reliable, then team player, then eager, and then outside, thinks outside the box. So I want you to illustrate these concepts for me and I want you to illustrate them in a way that speaks to who you are. So that's the exercise. And uh, you can do it by any kind of web search. Maybe the first thing you wanna do is, is type these words in, but there are other more sophisticated ways to find what you want. But search until you find the image that displays that concept for you in a way that you feel good about, and then put it up here. You guys can continue to work on this. I'm gonna go back to the, the lecture, but you can work on this while I'm talking. Uh, and it's just a fun little exercise. It hones your skills. It's just about getting you better so that when you start to interpret your own voiceover script, you're gonna find it easier to find just the right images because you don't wanna find just any images. You don't wanna have a hodgepodge of images. You want the images to, to have stylistic clarity. I want, you want them to have the sophistication that says who you are. You want it to speak to the audience and that means you have to know who the audience is, et cetera. So, you know, uh, all of these th factors go into to the choices that you make. So let's go back, continue. You guys can keep working on that and we'll come back and, and, and take a look at how you guys did. And again, those of you that are watching this video, uh, it's linked into the discussion board. So you'll be able to participate throughout the week as well. And we can use the discussion board to talk about the ideas. So uh, the first step in crafting your story is taking all those various elements of ideas that you put together from the beginning, middle, and end, your story flow, and figuring out how to tell the story that you want to tell. And we, we learned last week from the emotional story exercise that there's all kinds of ways to tell a story. And you don't always go, go through it straight on or chronologically. Sometimes you have to arrive to it slightly obliquely. 
And another part that important part of storytelling is that you don't give everything the same weight. You pick and choose details. And so there might be one element that you embellish and you, 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 you make it come alive because that's the thing that's gonna you know, grab people's attention. And then there may be parts of your story that you have to abstract a little bit more, talk, talk a little bit less out about so that your story doesn't go on forever. A lot of times when, when uh, students turn on the microphone and just start winging it, thinking that, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll automatically know when it's three or four minutes. And they start talking about themselves and they get wrapped up. Before you know it, it's 18 or 20 minutes have gone by. And uh, we want you to have a little more control over your story. And again, that's why we recommend that you write it down as a script. Uh, in writing it down as a script, you can know that the amount of text that you put per page, uh, one minute per page, uh, can, can control for the timing. And uh, we're not gonna be real sticklers about the timing here. If you're a little bit under or you're a little bit over, that's fine. But again, this is also the first draft and we're gonna have a chance to make it better. So if you go a little bit over this first time, which is quite common because it's hard to get all the parts of your story abstracted down in the right amount of detail. But then you have a chance to come back and you figure out with a little more clarity uh, how to edit it down or get it just to the right length because the, the timing matters. Uh, if your story is short enough, then it never gets boring. It, it stays really as, as, as a, an exciting story. If you, if you drag it out a little too long, it might hurt the pacing. So uh, three to four minutes, we figured out that this is a really good length to tell your story in a certain way. Now, this isn't the way you, you always tell your story, and it means that certain details are gonna suffer. So you have to figure out, you pick and choose, choose the structure of the story. What are the details that matter, that matter for you to say and for your audience to hear? And remember, you're crafting the story for your audience. So a lot of times, uh, students will make a really long version in the beginning, in their first draft, uh, for themselves, because they just needed to say all this stuff, and they really weren't thinking about the audience. But then when they come back at it, and they look at it from the eyes of the audience, you figure out, this matters, this, this matters to me, but it won't matter so much to the employer that I'm talking about. And you're able to then make those structures. So uh, in, April, in order to help you come to these uh, uh, story layouts, because you're each gonna have to figure these things out on your own, uh, I've posted a couple of videos uh, in, in the, the uh, discussion board. And again, uh, no one has a responsibility to post, but we're putting helpful things there and we want you to share things with your classmates. If you find a, a good program or you have a good idea or you find a good source for, for background music or something, you might wanna share that with your classmates. Uh, and then some, if you wanna get critiques on your scripts before you read them, you've written it, but you haven't read it out loud, you, you can post those kinds of things through the week. And later in the week, we're gonna post the entire story, our entire pr presentation, so that next week we can give each other feedback on the whole thing. Uh, this week's discussion board is gonna actually extend the open and be open both this week and next week. It lasts two weeks long. So things that you put in this week will still be available next week. Um, one of the videos that I posted is a, a, another TED Talk. It's by a fellow named Simon Sinek. And I think a lot of you are gonna find this very uh, useful. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to turn their lives into a story. They, they're, they're looking for a job and, and, and you think that you're just saying your resume. And everyone has a resume. A resume is a listing of data. It's the things in your life that you did. It's, it's the what of your life. It is absolutely the, the elements that people need to know if you're giving uh, someone your, 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 your history. And resumes have that structure. But they're not a story. You have, to, you have to do work to turn the facts of your life into a story. So people think that they're reading their resume and it becomes this boring PowerPoint because it's just stuff. How can you turn it into a story? Well, Simon Sinek has a brilliant idea, which is that instead of saying what you did, 
Tell us why you did it. What were the intrinsic motivations that led you to do any of the things that are in your resume? So you'd still talk about all the elements of your life that are important. But if saying, instead of saying what I did, I, I was in band camp for three years. Tell us why you did it. I was in band camp because I loved working with other musicians and I actually uh, created, created uh, orchestral framings and blah, blah, blah. There are going to be things that you have to say that are fascinating because what led you to do the things in your life is a story. It is getting to the heart of what's interesting. So if you're having trouble figuring out how to take the facts of your life and turn it into a story, Simon Sinek's Start With Why I think will help a lot of you. So I re highly recommend watching it. Simon Sinek is an amazing speaker and I think you'll really enjoy it. Now, this other one's a little more um, um, esoteric. It won't help as many of you, but a lot of you have led very complicated lives. You don't actually know why you did everything. Your, your whole life doesn't actually make sense. You did some, such and such for a time, and then you did such and such, and you know, you bounced around. You had to discover who you are. There, there are multiple parts of your story. And you could tell it in chronological order, but it wouldn't make it didn't make any more sense. So Tony Zoe's How to Structure a Video Essay looks at a documentary that Orson Welles did called F for Fake. And the interesting thing about F for Fake is that it's a documentary that doesn't have one subject or two subjects or three subjects. It has six different subjects. And instead of doing them one at a time, it tells those stories in parallel. It starts a little bit of each story and then jumps over and starts adding to the next story. And they build and there's suspense and interest as he goes back and forth. And eventually at the end, they do all come together and it makes the story make more sense because that's the sense of having lived it. So a lot of you, if, you, if you've had complicated lives, you, you had one career and then you started over and, and you were in the army and then you, you, know, uh, you had other things. Uh, uh, if there's a lot of your life that doesn't necessarily flow into a single story, maybe that's a story to tell in parallel. And the interesting thing uh, that Tony Zoe sets up for us is that we can understand the structure very easily because he talks about it in terms of the TV show, South Park. South Park's an animated comedy, it's 22 minutes long, every single episode has three different topics that run parallel and they all come together at the end. And if you think about South Park for just a little bit, uh, you'll realize that that's actually the structure that the uh, um, South Park goes with. So again, this is not something for everybody, but if your life fits this pattern, then this is a useful way to tell your story. So these are here just as a helpful hints. Uh, I've also posted some other things, some, some listings of uh, um, uh, online media tools that you can use and, and uh, audio helpful things I'm gonna get to later on. Uh, the last bit of the reading that I wanna talk about is uh, uh, in, in uh, in one of the chapters, it's called The Three Pillars of Public Speaking. And it's about how you orient yourself to an audience. You know, you, you want to study your audience, you want to know your audience, but it, in the end, there's a certain relationship that you will have to the audience based on what you have to say and how you have to say it. And uh, people have been speaking in public for a long, long time. so. These, this idea, the three pillars, comes from Aristotle 3,000 years ago. The Greeks loved to get up and speak publicly. And, every, and uh, Aristotle saw a lot of really great public speakers, and he, he categorized them all into three different types in terms of their relationship to the audience. And those three types are ethos, meaning that the audience is going to believe you because you're credible, you're trustworthy that the way that the, uh, your relationship to the audience is, is that you come across as sincere. Now this is part of what we dealt with last week in, in terms of hail, that the audience accepts you as someone who's believable to talk about this topic and they believe that you're telling them the real deal. Ethos, on the other hand, is the appeal to emotion. So instead of being 
trust me, you know, I'm sincere and I'm the one that has that knows what to tell you. In the appeal to pathos, you are appealing to the audience's emotions. And there's a gamut of emotions. You're, you're appealing to their, their sympathy, to their happiness, to their, uh, you, you may be doing things that are cute. You can make them angry. But in stirring up the emotions of the audience, you are sidestepping how they feel about you and you are instilling in them, uh, you know, uh, particular passions. And the third uh, aspect is logos, the appeal to logic, that you build an argument and that it is unassailable. And the, and the main point about building a, uh, um, uh, an appeal to logic is that every part of your argument has to make sense. So when you speak, you're kind of really going to have footnotes or you're going to say where your facts came from or you're gonna you know, list the source. Uh, you might have charts and graphs, et cetera. There might be lots of footnotes, but everything you say, you have to actually be able to prove. So the audience is looking for the, the flaw in your argument, and if there is none, then they accept that your, your, your argument makes sense. So let's take a look at these a little bit more closely. In ethos, the audience asks, does the audience respect you? Does the audience believe you're a good character? Are you? Tom Hanks, America's dad, are you the kind of person that people want to believe? Uh, does the audience believe you're generally trustworthy? The audience believe you're an authority on the topic. Now this notion of authority is a little bit of a, um, a hitch because sometimes we attach authority to titles. You know, someone comes up to speak and they've got uh, Dr. PhD after their title and maybe, you know, th three or four other uh, uh, um, appendages. And so we feel like we want to trust them because society has gained, put so much honor on them. But that's not the only way that you can have an appeal to, to trust. You could be someone who's not an expert. Like uh, you, could, you want to speak on the topic of cancer. You could say, well, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I lived through my mother's death. And I want to talk to you about my lived experience. And that lived experience is what makes you trustworthy that standing in front of the audience, talking to them in a way that they feel is authentic, he gives you that authority. So um, being an authority doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it's based on your resume. Sometimes it means it's based on your trustworthiness. Pathos. Do your words evoke feelings of sympathy, fear, happiness? Do your visuals evoke feelings of compassion or envy? So this is multimedia again, and your visuals are gonna be very important in creating these kind of emotional cues in the audience. Uh, the multimedia is incredibly important in creating pathos, especially combining you know, exciting background music with you know, uh, just the right images and so forth. Does your characterization of the competition evoke feelings of hate or contempt? All right, now this is not something you guys are gonna deal with because you guys are not supposed to be comparing yourself to anyone else coming up through this job. You're, you're wholly unique and you don't worry about anybody else who wants the same job you want. You're just talking about yourself. So you're not comparing yourself to anybody in, in the talk that we're giving you. But the, these, these uh, situations deal to all presentations. So in the future, there may be a time in which you, you want to um, promote yourself. And we see this an awful lot in political advertising that sometimes in, you don't promote yourself, you just um, slag the other guy. That your ad is meant to make the other guy uh, seem awful and therefore you're better by comparison. Uh, negative advertising is huge in politics and um, it, it, it's something that's very uh, volatile. You, you, when you start to invoke negative emotions in people or uh, get people to, to, to dislike things, um, you have to be very in control of what you're doing, very in control of your art because it can backfire on you. But uh, pathos is very powerful in that regard. In Logos, does your message make sense? Is your message based on facts, statistics, and evidence? 
Will your call to action lead to the outcome you proposed? So you're really just building a case towards the, the last line of your speech. You know, therefore, based on everything I said, you should join our cause. You should buy our product. You should hire me. You should convict my client, et cetera. It's almost like building a case in a legal case. And it's the final summation argument. That's what a logo based appeal is. And you really got to have it together because people will find the flaw in your argument if you don't, uh, you know, get it, get it nailed. And that makes everything fall apart. But if they can't fault, if they can't fault your logic, you win. And these things can overlap. So sometimes you can have some of ethos and some of pathos. You can have pathos and logos together. It's rare that you have them all together, but if you do, then absolutely you're connecting with the audience. But this is the one way to think about how do I connect to the audience? And obviously if you're a new student and you don't have a whole lot of experience and you're just going up to a game designer that's been in the business for 30 years, you know, you're not gonna impress him by your experience, but you may appeal to his emotions by saying you were young and, and hungry once and you have the passion for the game that I have and your passion will uh, be what you want to put forth because you don't feel like you're as much of an authority as you want to be yet. You know, certainly in, in going for your first job, that's something that can often happen. Now, I'm not saying that everybody's appeal in this opening, uh, this particular topic is going to be pathos because it depends on how you approach the material. A lot of you, especially uh, programmers and web designers and so forth, you can build a case that you know this language and you know that language and you worked on this project and worked on that project and you can actually butt up that everything that they need to take uh, everything they need in an uh, employee you've already nailed and and that becomes a logos based argument for why they should hire you and uh, it, it works pretty pretty well if you you uh, put it there all right so uh, that's it for um, talking about the reading. Now what I want to get back to, uh, let's, let's take a look at how people are doing. I've got some great images here. Charisse has uh, a really terrific piece of art that looks really expressive. Uh, Jonathan's got a great uh, graphic photograph that's very strong. So I see a lot of, uh, I say a, a great sense of visuals with you guys. Uh, Jonathan's uh, uh, puzzle builders works as well. So you guys, I think, get what I'm talking about. And this is a fun exercise that you could just keep working on. Uh, really, you don't have to turn it in or anything. It's just something that kind of help you think about what you want to do. So uh, that's the reading. Now, as we uh, go into the um, discussion board here, again, I say nobody has to post in the discussion board. I have put in the videos, and I put a link, a list of links here. And so uh, I have an article here that shows off 41 different um, presentation programs, online presentation programs. Some are good, some are bad. Uh, a lot of them are you know of, like Prezi, Emaze. Emaze is a really nice program. They have lots of great um, base platforms for the way they navigate through material. Uh, but uh, the online program that we recommend most for you guys is Adobe Spark. Adobe Spark in the video format allows you to really bring in images and, and audio together. It allows you to export as video. It allows you to control for audio. It allows you to have background music if you like and so forth. Uh, so it really has a lot of great uh, tools. Uh, and again, because everyone's getting their own copy of Office 365, PowerPoint is something that most of you are going to want to use, and we're happy for you to use PowerPoint. Um, if you're not familiar with PowerPoint, there's some things we want to talk to you about, uh, especially in regards to audio, to get you set up. Uh, some other things in here, uh, I've got an article on how to use uh, uh, um, voice memo recording uh, apps for iPhone, if you want to record your audio on iPhone. And we have some audio apps that you can use on Android. So if you're working with an Android phone, we have some audio apps that we can recommend for you. 
And if you have an older Android phone and it's not able to um, work with a lot of the media tools, you're going to find that, that PowerPoint on the phone and a lot of these other things don't have the audio uh, capabilities that, that the, the, the desktop versions have. So if you have an older Android phone and that is your workstation, uh, there is a tool that we're recommending here called VoiceThread. It's a, a simple tool that allows you to do the things we're asking you to do. It records the audio uh, voiceover, allows you to add slides, and uh, it works pretty easily and it's pretty accessible. So uh, if you're having trouble finding a program that works with your phone and you're on an Android phone, uh, I would recommend eMaze. If you're on a, an iOS phone or an iPhone or an iPad, lots more options. Uh, again, we're gonna recommend Adobe Spark or PowerPoint or even Keynote. Uh, uh, if you want to use Google Docs, you know, uh, this is a Google Doc. This is, this is a document. So this is Google Docs and, and showing off the uh, uh, I, I basically made this grid, but uh, this is really just a, a, a text document. But there is also um, Google Slides, and it's very much like PowerPoint, only it has fewer options. So if you're new to Google, if you're new to PowerPoint, uh, I almost recommend working on Google Slides because it has uh, an easier interface to work with. But then the, uh, the difficulty of Google Slides is that it does not incorporate audio. An online version doesn't have audio, but it allows you to export a PowerPoint file and you can then add audio to that. And there are uh, those of you that wanna make your audio on your own, not using it in PowerPoint, uh, but to use your own desktop tools, uh, we're recommending Audacity. Uh, Audacity is an open source PowerPoint program, or, uh, is an open source audio program. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So you can download it, it's free. It has a great visual interface. Uh, it's easy to learn. There are a lot of great tool tutorials on the, uh, the web for it, but really uh, you get a visual uh, feedback of your recording and you get a lot of tools to edit very quickly. So uh, this is a, a, a very nice way to edit and create your audio file. Uh, it, it also converts from, uh, to different audio file types. So uh, we find Audacity uh, a really great program for, uh, for beginners to, to use. Uh, if you're in the audio programs, you can use the higher end tools. You can use Garage Tools or Logic if you like. But again, uh, please don't use those tools if you haven't already become familiar with them because they have a learning curve uh, associated with them. So the last thing I wanted to do is go into PowerPoint here and talk about uh, some hidden features that they have. So this is the latest version of PowerPoint. This is what you get if you have Office 365. And uh, when you open it up, it asks you to choose a template. So the template is just a collection of backgrounds and, and fonts and uh, 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 styles that you can work with together. So I'm gonna just select one really quickly here and create uh, something very quickly. So now I'm gonna create a, um, a title slide real quickly. I just wanna show something off here to do with audio. And in order to do that, I need to have a couple of slides. So I'm gonna insert uh, one slide, call that number two, Another slide, let's call that number three. I'm being creative here, aren't I? And let's do one more slide, call him number four. Now, they don't tell you how to do audio. Uh, for some reason, PowerPoint doesn't ship with a manual anymore. And there's so many features in this, they've started hiding features. And that's what's really difficult for me to, to help you guys with is that there's some really important stuff that it's in here that's under hidden menus. And that's what I need to talk to you about. So oftentimes if you're left on your own to work with PowerPoint, you think that the only way to add audio is to add so much audio per slide that with, within a, a particular slide, you can record audio and then that's it. That's not the way that I want you to work. I want you to have one continuous 
voiceover that's three to four minutes long. So if you're gonna record that audio in PowerPoint, and PowerPoint will do it for you on the desktop, if you have the Mac or PC version of PowerPoint, you need to go to slide number one. You need to be on slide one so that your audio lands on slide one. And from there, you would go to insert. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this from the top menu. You go to insert audio, record audio, and spring up a little tool not quite as uh, full featured as Audacity, but it works fine. So if I hit the red button, I'm gonna start to record. It's recording what I'm saying right now. So I can talk, I can talk continuously. Uh, now, it doesn't allow you to edit here, so you need to get it all right. And you may have to do a lot of rehearsing to get it all right, but if you get everything you want said done, you then stop the recording, hit insert, and it inserts a piece of uh, a file onto the desktop or onto the slide one. Now, here's the important thing that I want you all to know. There are missing menus here that you need to have access to. There are only four menus right now home, insert, draw, design, transitions, animations, slideshow, review, uh, and view. Uh, but once you select a piece of audio, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click once on this and you can see that it's outlined. All of a sudden, there are two more menus, audio format and playback. So if you go to the playback menu, you have two options here. You can start the audio automatically, which is what I want you to do. I don't want anybody to have to click to initiate audio. I want the audio to start as soon as the program starts. And you hit play across slides. You have to enable this so that the audio on slide one will then play across all the slides. Once you do that, though, it works really easily, but they don't tell you this. So I'm telling you this now, this is the hidden menu. You select the audio and you see the hidden menus. The menu you want is playback. Make sure you're starting automatically and you play across slides. And once you've done that, you have the ability to set the sync. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's gonna play the audio. It's gonna go into a run mode. And I'm gonna tell it when to move slides and it's gonna remember that. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to go to slideshow, record slideshow. That's the command. When I hit record slideshow, it's gonna start running and the audio that I've recorded, it's gonna start playing. I'm gonna to start to record. It's recording. So now, this is right. the audio. So I'm gonna move to slide two. Continuously. Uh, move to slide three. Now, it doesn't allow you to edit here. So move to slide four. You get it all right. And you may have to do and I'm done. So I'm going to hit yes, and it's recording those timings. And now it tells me that of the audio that I recorded, four seconds of it is on slide one, two seconds is on slide two, two seconds is on slide three, two seconds is on slide four. Now, if that's not the sync that I want, because I'm going to do this with a three or four minute piece of audio, and you're probably going to have 10 or 12 slides. Um, now, uh, a rule of thumb here is that you shouldn't hold any slide longer than 20 minutes, 20 seconds. So if you're running a four minute uh, presentation, you, you should be having at least 12 slides and maybe even more. So uh, sometimes they'll go by very fast. Sometimes you'll hold on to them for a little bit longer. I don't want you to hold on to any slide longer than 20 seconds. But once you record your voiceover, you're gonna wanna be able to move the slides at your will. And the nice thing is in order to edit this thing, if I wanna change the order of these slides, if I wanna take slide three and move it over here so that it comes after slide four, I've changed this order. Now I have to rerun this, but it's, it's simply a matter of hitting record slideshow again and, and doing the sync over again. So if I got the sync wrong or I wanna make a change, you just come back and you re-record that sync. But once you've set the sync up, it's gonna play back exactly as you said, told it to. It remembers those timings. And then uh, from there, you, 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 know, you can uh, turn in the file and it'll play back for anybody. And that's uh, a really great thing that PowerPoint does, but you have to know how to put the audio in in the first place. So now that I've told you, uh, you know the secret, tell everybody else. Um, that's as much as I have going this week. I wanna answer some questions.
and I'm going to be around all week to, to deal with anybody, any technical problems anybody has. So right now, um, anybody that has a question, you can ask it in the chat box or you can raise your hand and I will unmute your mic. Anybody want to ask a question? Anybody want to type a question? You guys are all still there, right? Is there a way to insert pre-record audio? Absolutely, that was a great question. I should have mentioned that before, but um, let me go back into PowerPoint. I'm gonna start it over. All right, if I go to insert audio, one of the options is audio from file. So if you've pre-recorded the audio, so again, using Audacity is actually a better way to record your audio. You could have a, a WAV or an MPEG-3 or an MPEG-4 file, and you could open that up and select it here, and it'll drop it right on slide one for you. So uh, you simply have to use um, that insert file from audio command. Thanks, Jonathan. Anybody else? Professor, will you be available the whole week in case we need? Absolutely. I'm going to be hanging around. Um, I'm going to I'm going to hang around on the uh, the website, and I'm going to try to hang around as much as I can in the uh, uh, Discord uh, channel. So that way you can get a hold of me immediately. Or you, remember, I'm just a text away. I've given you my cell phone number. If you want to text me, I'll I'll answer anybody right away. Uh, and if it's a um, uh, something that I need to show you or we need to work out, I can get on the phone and we can talk through it there. Does this sync automatically save after you uh, do the record show? Well, it, you'll notice that when I ran the sync recording, at the end, it threw up a little button that said, do you wanna save this? And if you didn't, if you know you screwed it up, you could just say no. But if you say yes, it automatically saved that sync. So when you run slideshow, it'll always save it at the end if you tell it yes. What is my cell phone number? Um, well, it's on the website, but if you want me to give it to you right now, it's 407-461-0633. Actually, it's, easy, it's easier for me to type it there. You know, I should, uh, 461-0633. And uh, just, well, uh, 461, forget the, uh, forget the typo I made in there. Um, presentation is to brand ourselves, but I'm not understanding what the main goal for our presentation is. Um, well, I, I just put in brand yourselves. When we say brand, we mean your reputation, your skills, your skill set, the, the person that you want to be. And basically, we're saying, tell the employer who you are. Give them a sense of why you are somebody that they really want to know, that they want to work with. So when we say brand, we're really just talking about the set of skills that is you, the, the reputation that you have for the work that you can do. And that's what you want to show off to this dream employer. They've never met you, but you come into the room, make an impression. I know it's difficult. I know it's sometimes feels weird or embarrassing, but believe me, creative people are always up for meeting other creative people. And all they really want is to get there, get to the meet as fast as possible. So if you use a lot of pleasantries and you throw up a lot of junk, that's them waiting for you to get to the real stuff. You know, if you, if you love video games then talk about your video game ideas, if you love music, Talk about the kind of music that you want to make. Tell them what kind of artists you're going to be. Tell them what you're passionate about. Tell them what you want to work on. Tell them your ideas for their products. You know, if you're talking to Netflix and, and you've got ideas for, for new television series, throw them out there. Blow their minds. But make them see that you're a valuable person. That's your task. So when we say your brand, the brand is the person that you want to be coming. 
And we know we all aren't that person yet. So there's a little reaching in here, but it, it's about visualization in a good way that, that we're making a plan for the person we want to become. So we talk about ourselves on why we chose this field and what makes us want to do it. Yeah, I would think that everybody would want to at least have a little bit of uh, why you're into what you're into in there. Maybe that's not in, as important as the ideas you have, but uh, they have to get a sense that you're a person who developed. You know, don't come in and just talk like, you know, uh, you're an already established person and, and you know, uh, you never had a beginning. You obviously had a beginning. And so give them a sense of who you are. How much you talk about your early development or how much you talk about your school development, it's up to you. Um, you know, don't talk about your school development as if um, having gone to school automatically qualifies you. Talk about your school development as if this is the opportunity I had to develop X. Because you can't just say, well, I took this class, so you should hire me. That means they should hire everyone who ever took that class. You're, you know, you want to say, I took this class and I learned these things from it and this is what I want to do for you. And that's the point of talking about your education. That's what point of talking about your background and your development and your life story is so that they know who you are and they get a sense of why they want to hire you. More questions? Yeah, that's a great way to think about it, Brandon. Imagine school as a path to get to your destination instead of a qualification. You know, no one's going to hire you because you went to full sale. But because you went to full sale, there's an opportunity that you became someone that we want to hire. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about the work that you did. Because everybody comes to full sale and everybody does their own work. And that's what makes them different and unique. Anybody else? I'm going to be here all week. So, uh, but remember, I want you to follow this process. I want you to do the voiceover first and then add slides. So the very first thing is to figure out what you want to say. If you don't want to write a script, then make notes enough so that you can do your voiceover. Uh, but get that voiceover nailed. And once you've done that, then start working on slides to go with it. Um, how do we go into the depth of classes we haven't done? Well, again, I wanted everyone to look up their curriculum so you could see what these classes were. And from the titles of the classes, you're gonna know what you're, you're most looking forward to. And then I want you to just to imagine what you got out of it. You know, if you're a person who knows that you, you know, you, you wanna be a filmmaker and, you, and you're really interested in studying lighting, then talk about the lighting class and then uh, you won't be able to say everything you already learned from it, but you, you have a sense of what you were expecting to get out of it. And you can then say that, that, that worked for you. You know, if you want to become a game developer and you know that, uh, you want to build entire worlds, planets, then, you know, when you, when you get a class called world building, you know, that gives you the opportunity to know that, you know, you developed your, uh, your, 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 natural terraforming skills, and that you're able to uh, use your imagination to build vast landscapes and so forth. And you talk about that. You don't necessarily say exactly what you learned, but you talk about what you got out of it as um, an aspiration. I'm sensing a little bit of fear here, but I know you guys can do this. I think you guys are a really, really sharp bunch. I think you already know how to tell stories. I think you know who you're going to be. You know, just commit to doing this, and uh, I think that you'll find that it goes by very fast. Anybody else? All right. Well, uh, if you, if anybody has any questions or, or something you want to ask me without everybody else around, that's fine too. Again, I'm going to be available all week 
and uh, nobody feel like you bug me. Um, somebody called me on Saturday night at 10 o'clock and I was less than hospitable and I feel bad about that, but it's like pretty much there's no time that, that that's the wrong time. Call whenever you like and I'll be around. So um, uh, I want you guys to have a really creative week this week. This is the time where you guys are really gonna kick out the jams and show us who you are. And I can't wait, I for one can't wait to see. So thanks everybody and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you this week.